स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया So let us look at one more example. The other example that I have, I example number ten. So this is a problem in two D, and the problem says that we have to look at the motion of a particle, motion of a particle in a plane. So this is a problem in two D. Uh, plane under a central force, under a Central under under a central force uh, force whose whose potential under a central force whose potential uh, per unit mass potential per unit mass is v with with the Hamiltonian with the Hamiltonian uh, given by h of q bar comma p bar given by 1 by 2 of p1 square plus p2 by q1 whole square plus v of q1 v of q1 right so suppose suppose the 2d problem would have been uh, in the polar setup suppose we were describing the problem in polar coordinates then people can recognize my coordinate q1 as my radial coordinate so so just a trivia in polar form in polar form my coordinate q1 is r which is the translational variable the translational variable and my coordinate q2 which is theta is the rotational variable right okay so let's move ahead so from here i can write down i can write down my solution to the reduced uh, to the reduced hamilton jacobi equation reduced hamilton jacobi equation i see that this is also equal to i replace my pi's to be del psi del qi's so my equation looks like following so 1 by 2 del psi del q1 Square plus one by q q one square times del psi del q two whole square plus v of q one. This is equal to e. From here, I can multiply throughout by q one. So I get an alternate form q one square uh, times del psi del q one whole square plus two times v of q1 minus e right plus del psi del q2 whole square this is equal to 0 the the reason for writing it in this form is notice that this is purely a function of q1 while this quantity is purely a function of q2 and that will help us to select our quantities g1 and g2 so let me let me select our in the solution strategy let me select our g of q1 comma del psi del q1 the function to be q1 square times del psi del q1 whole square plus 2 times v of q1 minus e right and my g2 is g2 of variable q2 comma del psi del q2 is equal to del psi del q2 right so what we do is we seek we seek solutions we seek solutions of the form psi is equal to psi1 plus psi2 right so psi1 is a function of q1 comma alpha so alpha comes out to be uh, typically these are constants or the functions of capital q which is the generalized coordinate right and psi2 is psi2 of q comma alpha 
ok well q not q but q 2. So, this is q 1 and this is q 2. So, then so then let us uh, so so where my alphas so alpha bar is alpha 1 alpha 2 these are my constant vectors. Uh, so, so these are my constants ok. So, what we do is we take we within this constant we are going to take take one constant alpha 1 to be 2 e right, because we have a 2 e which is appearing in this setup. So, now the next stage involves the solution the solution of uh, of O d e's that we have g is equal to c i's. I see that uh, I see uh, let us set up the O d e's. The second O d e is quite easy to set up. So, del psi del q 2 is equal to alpha 2 or I see that psi uh, psi of q 2 uh, well. So, this is so the corresponding ODs are g 1 is equal to alpha 1 and g 2 is equal to alpha 2 these are my ODs right. So, so this is equal to alpha 2 q 2 and why we have not we have avoided the constant of integration because we want to express our final answer in terms of only two constants alpha 1 and alpha 2 right 2 d problem 2 constants. So, psi of q 2 is as follows and then also for the first case we have q 1 square del psi del q 1 whole square plus 2 v of q 1 I am just writing this expression here minus alpha 1 right. Uh, plus uh, so this is also equal to uh, well plus alpha 2 square is equal to 0 right ok. So, uh, so yeah uh, well where where did this happen because we have in in our original this is plus alpha 2 square because uh, because of the Hamilton Jacobi equation. This is let me call the Hamilton Jacobi equation as star. So, from this is from from star right. So, now I have to solve for psi 1. So, these are my this is my equation for psi 1 as a function of alpha 1 and alpha 2. Uh, so, I can directly let me write down the expression directly. So, psi 1 of q 1 comma alpha comes out to be the integral of square root of alpha bar well alpha integral of alpha 1 minus 2 v of q 1 minus alpha 2 square by q 1 square right. Let me call this quantity as as square root f d q 1 right. And uh, so, I leave the solution in this form where f is the quantity inside this integral assuming that uh, so, f is in general. So, this is square root of f of q 1 comma alpha bar uh, assuming that this can be integrated. So, then all I do is I check whether I check whether the solution is complete or not. So, check this matrix del 2 psi del q j del alpha k I see that this is a 2 d matrix 2 by square root f minus alpha 2 by q 1 square square root f 0 1 and I can see that uh, the determinant of this is equal to the determinant of this matrix which will be 1 by 2 square root f this is not going to be 0 provided my function f is well defined or positive ok provided if my f the function is positive right ok. So, then then in that case I can directly write down my my Hamilton's equation my Hamilton's equation to give me the e extremals are as follows. So, beta uh, so beta 1 this is for the original setup which in involves time right. So, so my beta 1 is negative del psi del alpha 1 minus t uh, I just plug in the value of psi. Uh, so, that will be after 
plugging the value of psi, I get that this is negative half, this is still, uh, still left in the form of the integral square root of f minus t and beta 2 is negative del psi del alpha 2, right. And then again I, I keep it in the form of the integral. So, this is integral of d q 1 by q 1 square square root f minus q 2, right. Where my beta k's are constants, my beta k's are constants and note that my p 2 uh, so, my beta k's are constant. Note that, so that is the end of the problem. The, the problem, final step of the problem involves inverting these two relations to find my q1 and q2, which is my uh, extremal to the Hamiltonian system, right. So, note one thing, note that p2, the second component of the momentum or the second component is del psi del q2, right. But this is, notice that del psi del q2, del psi del q2 is a constant, right, by the setup of our problem. This is also equal to alpha 2, which is a constant, which means now, notice that to begin with in polar coordinates, we had assumed that the second component involved uh, uh, represented the, the angle or the rotational component. So, p2 is the angular momentum in the physical language and we are showing here that in this setup the angular momentum is con constant. So, this statement, so this is nothing but our angular momentum or the rate of change or uh, so or the change in the angular component of, uh, of our solution and we are saying that the angular momentum is constant meaning that we are saying that the law of conservation of angular momentum is satisfied in this problem. So, conservation of angular momentum is satisfied in this problem, ok. So, so let us, let us now cons consider, so, so far we have shown that if we are able to separate variables for conservative system, we should be able to solve and find the generating function which will give us the extremal to the original functional. The question is, can we really separate out the, uh, separate the variables? Now, I am going to state some conditions under which the, the reduced Hamilton Jacobi can be uh, variable separated. So, conditions for separation of variables for, uh, well, separation of variables, right. So, so it turns out I am going to write some criteria which is true and I am going to state some results in the form of theorem without proof. So, separation of variables for, for Hamiltonian system, Hamiltonian system, separation of variable for Hamiltonian system may not exist, may not exist. Uh, there is no guarantee, which means that no guarantee no guarantee that that g k s can be found. There is no guarantee that g k s can be found and uh, it turns out that we will see that a coordinate, a coordinate transformation, a coordinate transformation can, can affect, well can affect can affect the process, right, which means that in one coordinate the separation of variable can be done, while in another, the, for the same problem in another coordinate that it cannot be done. We will see some examples. Also, it turns out that the necessary, the necessary and the sufficient condition uh, for, condition for separation of variables of Hamiltonian system of Hamiltonian system uh, with, there are three, three uh, results that I am going to state for different, different coordinate systems. So, with, with orthogonal, orthogonal uh, coordinates, 
So, what do I mean by orthogonal coordinate system? That is system in which no product terms, no product terms q k dot q j dot involved, involved in our Hamiltonian H. Right? So, those are my orthogonal coordinate system. It turns out that it turns out that there is a necessary and sufficient condition given by Louville. I am going to state these results. Louville for n is equal to 2 and, and by Steckel, the German mathematician Steckel for n greater than equal to 3. Right? And uh, finally, finally for by Levi Civita, Levi Civita for non orthogonal for non orth orthogonal system in general right so we have we have the condition for all the cases right okay so let us now look at these i'm going to end my discussion by stating all these results few of these results we consider we consider our uh, hamilton jacobi equation of the form that we have seen in the, our separation of variable. So, let us say we have the following form which is half k from 1 to n c k of del psi del q k square plus the function v is equal to alpha 1 right where alphas are constants. Okay. So, let me call this as our expression 1 right. So, the first result by the theorem by Liouville. So, this is my theorem number 17. This is the theorem by Liouville or the result by Liouville. This is for two dimensional problem. It says that a necessary and a sufficient condition condition for for the Hamilton Jacobi equation Hamilton Jacobi equation half uh, half C 1 c 1 times del psi del q 1 square plus c 2 times del psi del q 2 square plus v of q bar is equal to alpha 1. So, this is a problem in 2 d. So, this is n equal to 2. So, a necessary sufficient condition for this equation where, where my constant c k s have are positive functions are positive functions of my variable q bar to have separable solutions to have separable solutions is the existence of these constants nu 1 <coughs> mu 1 sigma 1 and uh, mu mu uh, mu 2 nu 2 sorry nu 2 mu 2 sigma 2. So, the, the existence of these two pairs of constants depending these constants they all depend uh, well these are not constants, but these are functions. So, depending on q 1 and q 2 respectively. So, the first pair depends on q 1 and the second function set of functions they depend on q 2 right such that such that my function v, this function v here. So, v a can be written as nu 1 plus nu 2 divided by sigma 1 plus sigma 2 and c 1 is mu 1 divided by sigma 1 plus sigma 2 and c 2 is mu 2 divided by sigma 1 plus sigma 2. The moment we are able to write these constants sorry these functions of the generalized coordinates capital Q and this function v in this form, then we are guaranteed to have a separable solution that is what Liu will stated and proved. right? And then let us look at an uh, example. The example that I have in mind is the example that we just uh, considered of the central force problem, uh, example number 10, uh, few slides back. So, the problem, the problem is uh, this one. So, I am going to reconsider my problem. Uh, uh, this one, this problem, uh, 
this one, right. So, this is the problem which is example number 10 here, right. Okay. So, so uh, uh, recall, recall example 10 that was done few minutes back. Uh, see that my Hamiltonian uh, leads to the following Hamilton Jacobi equation which is times q 1 square del psi del q 1 whole square plus del psi del q 2 whole square plus q well plus q 1 square v of q 1 by q 1 square. So, this is how I am writing the equation this is equal to alpha 1 and that can be put can be put in the Liouville's form can be put in the Liouville's form this can be put in the Liouville's form if if I take my mu 1 to be q 1 square I take my mu 2 to be 1 I take my sigma 1 to be q 1 square I take my sigma 2 to be 0 I take my nu 1 to be q 1 square v of q 1 and I take my nu 2 to be 0. The moment we take all these quantities as follows we will see that this equation reduces to the Liouville's form as specified by the result in theorem 17. Okay? So, so that, that is the end of this discussion, but let us also uh, let us also reconsider this problem. So, reconsider this problem, reconsider uh, example 10 in Cartesian form, right. So, in Cartesian form notice what is happening in the Cartesian form. My Hamiltonian h of x comma y right now can be written in the following. So, 1 by 2 del psi del x whole square plus del psi del y whole square uh, plus plus v of q 1. So, v is a function of q 1, but q 1 is r, but r is in Cartesian form x square plus y square uh, under the root is equal to alpha 1. Notice, notice that the central force v 1 here depends on the square root of the function uh, uh, square root of the function x square plus y square. So, this in this case we cannot separate v 1, uh, we cannot separate the variable x and y in this function uh, as such unless and until this function itself is a constant or in other words this function cannot be written in the Liouville's form or uh, we cannot use the separation of variable when the same Hamiltonian is written in the Cartesian form. So, the moral of the story here is that the transformation process from one coordinate frame to the other may affect the solution methodology. So, finally, let me write down this statement. So, what I said is the following in this example. So, we cannot, we cannot get v separated, we cannot get v separated as required, as required by Liouville's as required by Liouville's theorem unless unless v is equal to a constant right so so which means no separable solution separable solution exists for the same problem uh, in in cartesian coordinates right uh, for the same problem. However, in polar we saw that a solution exists, separable solution exists. So, I end my discussion here due to uh, the lack of time, but we are going to continue and finish our discussion on the results of how can we separate solutions for higher dimensions and also for non-orthogonal coordinate, but more importantly we are going to look at a very, very important result by Nother which gives the relation between finding the conservation laws and the so called transformations which reduces our functional, uh, the function or the integrand in the functional. So, thank you very much for listening, thanks a lot.